One of the reasons Doctor is such an amazing show is its amazing lore. With a huge cast of villains and a huge cast of allies, it's very easy to miss a few people. Especially with the show catering to both new and old fans by regularly refreshing the show so that you can jump in at a later point. But that does mean that when we have various cameos or various returning villains, that we lose a lot of the lore. So I thought I would do a bit of a series going through some of the returning characters and the impact that they have had on the show before their new series impact in order to help newer fans understand the significance of these appearances. It should be notable that I will mostly be going through classic Doctor Who from the TV series, not any of the expanded universe. In celebration of Caroline Ford's birthday, and in line with her many references in Series 10, today we're looking at Susan Foreman. Susan was the first ever companion, predating the show itself, with her having left Gallifrey with the Doctor. She is the Doctor's granddaughter, although the genetic link is thrown into question in expanded canon such as Big Finish, there's no hint in the show that she is not genetically linked to the Doctor. Either way, she calls the Doctor Grandfather, and the Doctor calls her, her his granddaughter, so for all means and purposes, they are related. We first meet Susan at Coal Hill School in the first ever episode. Uh, this in itself becomes a recurring location, including being the school where Clara will later teach at, and the setting of the spin-off series class. Her teachers find her very odd due to having advanced knowledge. She showed intelligence clearly beyond that of the teachers, yet at the same time was getting simple stuff wrong, such as getting mixed up as to what monetary system they were using. She also showed frustration at not being able to do problems due to limited knowledge at the time, such as not being able to use the fourth dimension in calculations. This caused two of her teachers to follow her home, and the teachers got on board the TARDIS. At this point, the Doctor was a lot less caring than the Doctor that we know in Modern Who, and was actually quite horrible to the teachers, winding them up and basically trapping them in the TARDIS. Susan was trying to convince the Doctor to be nice and let them go. The Doctor, however, moved the TARDIS with the teachers and Susan inside, and claimed not be to be able to get them back home. Due to the era of the show, Susan was often reduced to a damsel in distress character. However, it was actually still a very progressive show, even back then, and she was often trying to convince the Doctor that he was wrong, or proven to be very intelligent. She preferred attempting to make peace, and trusted people very easily, which did make her gullible to a point, often believing the Doctor's trickery, even when she should know better, and in the first encounter with the Daleks, she inadvertently acted as a trap for the Daleks' enemies, so that they could proceed to kill them. After quite a while travelling with Ian, Barbara and the Doctor, the TARDIS ended up on 22nd century Earth. In this iconic story, the Daleks had taken control of the Earth and were attempting to turn it into a warship. The TARDIS team had to team up with a group of freedom fighters, including one called David Campbell, someone who Susan grew very close to. Once the Daleks were defeated, David asked Susan to stay with him, but she refused, saying that she would like to, but that the Doctor needed her. The Doctor overheard this, and his response to this was locking her out the TARDIS, and after the iconic I Will Come Back speech, leaving her behind to live happily with David. She returns to the show only once more, in the Five Doctor special. However, we gain very little information about her fate, but we do see that she still bears no resentment to the Doctor over him leaving her there, and still shows the immense respect she had for him before. Yes, I came a long time ago with my granddaughter. Although she's yet to make an appearance in the new series, she has been referenced quite a bit, mostly in Stephen Moffat era, and especially in series 10, where they seem to be trying to draw parallels between her and Bill. This is most obviously Knock Knock, in which they make a big deal about making Bill call the Doctor Grandfather, which is what Susan used to call him. There was also a line by David Suckett, which seems kind of Odd in the context of Bill, but does fit to the context of Susan. The increased references do make people believe that there is a link between Bill and Susan that will be explored, and that may be something which will be coming to fruition in the next couple of weeks. There are many different expanded universe tellings of Susan's story after she left the TARDIS. One issue with looking at these is that they do tend to clash a lot. One is true, and three or four are not. Saying that, there is one which is more likely to be the rest, with it being the only one in the big Finnish canon, which is confirmed canon thanks to the mini seven Night of the Doctor. In this one, she's married David and had a child called Alex with him. Alex has some Gallifreyan biology, including resistance to certain plagues, but only has one heart. 
David died soon after Alex's birth, and the Doctor met Alex and Susan again when he, Alex was 17. Soon after this, the Daleks attempted to invade Earth again, and Susan, the Doctor, his current companion Lucy, and Alex all worked together to defeat the Daleks. But the cost was very high. In one of the darkest stories in Doctor Who history, multiple characters died, including Alex. The Doctor was distraught by the events of this story, and ended up leaving Susan alone to grieve her son's death. This is the last we see of Susan in any form of canon. If they choose to keep this canon, then it is plausible that grief will be a contributing factor to motivations in her new series. One final thing to discuss is that even though Susan is Gallifreyan, there is a bit of debate as to whether she is Time Lord or not. The key difference being that she did not complete her time at the Academy before leaving, and therefore may not be capable of regeneration. However, due to her coming from such an early era of the show, we don't have a definitive answer as to whether she can regenerate. So that's just a brief history on Susan, which will hopefully be useful if she does appear in Series 10, and hopefully is interesting even if she does not. Thank you all for watching. If you'd like to learn more about Susan, then I will leave a link in the description below, which will include a list of all of her appearances in Doctor Who to date. And also, if you'd like to see more videos from me, then just check out my channel. Feel free to subscribe and leave a like. If you would like me to do a specific character, please leave a comment below, and I will take that into consideration for future episodes. Thank you very much, and I'll see you next time. The Ganeto is the best. You want to like, comment, and subscribe.